We're here today to speak with one of the contributors to our new book, How to Heal Our Divides. Molly LaCroix is a licensed marriage and family therapist in private practice who received her master's degree in marriage and family therapy from Bethel Seminary, San Diego, and returned to Bethel as an adjunct professor in the MFT program. Molly has the highest possible level of training in the internal family systems model. Molly and her husband live in Central Oregon, visiting their children and grandchildren in Southern California as often as they possibly can. Her book, Restoring Relationship, Transforming Fear into Love Through Connection, integrates the internal family systems model and Christianity. So Molly, it's really wonderful to have you involved in our Healing uh, Divides book. Oh, thank you for offering to, uh, for me to be included. It's wonderful. Well, I think you're a perfect fit. You know, you and, the, and you know, the, this topic are exactly the type of thing that should be included in such a book. Um, but I just gave a really brief overview of your background. Could you please tell us more about that and your practice? Yeah, well, in, in my practice, you know, I've, I've long been interested in um, healing, you know, and some, some models of psychotherapy are more about, um, temporary symptom relief, which has its place. Um, but I've always been drawn to approaches that really help us heal those deep wounds, uh, that are the, the source of a lot of the symptoms that we struggle with, whether that's symptoms in ourselves or things that, you know, provoke distress in relationships. And, um, and so I studied a number of different models um, and have found the internal family systems model to not only be a comprehensive approach to healing, um, but one that is highly congruent with Christian spirituality. And so um, when I, when I Came, came back around to it. I was exposed to it in grad school, but when I came back around to it, I, I dove all in. <laughs> so I've, I've done a lot of the training. Good, good. Well, it sounds like it. I mean, and, and not only the training, but put it into practice, you know, with lots yeah. of clients. That's right. That's right. And that's, you know, as they say, that's where the rubber meets the road. And when you <laughs> see, when you see the impact with clients, um, some of whom um, I had worked with using other modalities and then shifted to this approach and really saw progress that I hadn't seen before. Wonderful. Yeah. That's great to know. Yeah. So most of us are not familiar with psychotherapy at all, much <laughs> less the internal family systems model. So could you explain it to us? Yes. Um, briefly, as the name implies... The perspective of this model is that um, we are multiple, that multiplicity is actually a normal reflection of our humanity, not a sign of pathology, as is some people fear <laughs> when they hear the term multiplicity, um, that when we begin to notice what's going on inside ourselves, uh, that things that we thought were just random thoughts or emotions or sensations or images turn out to be the activity of parts of ourselves or subpersonalities. And, and what I, you know, what I found is when people are new to this concept of multiplicity, one of the things that makes sense to them is that most of us have done some kind of personality assessment. And so we recognize, well, we ha I have these different traits, these personality traits. And this is really like taking that one step further hmm. and seeing those traits as the activity of different parts of ourselves. And, and so in, in developing this model, Dr. Richard Schwartz, who founded this model just through, through being radically curious and being willing to go wherever his clients took him, um, developed this model about 35 years ago. And it is what we call evidence-based, meaning there have been controlled um, rigorous scientific studies done on this model to demonstrate the efficacy. And one of the things, not only did he start to see the activity of different parts in his clients, um, he also found that no matter what they had experienced in life, no matter how extreme the trauma or the adversity, they always had what he came to recognize as the leader of the family. And 
that the leader possessed these qualities that were not obliterated by what they'd experienced. They had just been blocked by the ways that we adapt to the suffering that's inevitable in this life. You know, we all experience some kind of adversity and we adapt to it. And, and so that, that's a, dis, a distinctive feature of this model. And, and one of the things that I see is very congruent with Christian spirituality, you know, because the premise is that, you know, we were created in God's image and the image of God cannot be obliterated by anything. It can be blocked, but it's there. Interesting. Interesting. So there's also um, an organization called the Internal Family Systems Institute that I believe Dr. Schwartz um, founded. Is that correct? He's founded, still still very involved with. Yeah. yeah I have, mm -hmm. No, just tell us more about that. Yeah, yeah. The IFS Institute exists to support, um, you know, the promulgation of this model in not only in psychotherapy, but beyond, you know, it's being used in education, in, um, in corporate settings, um, in a variety of settings. Um, so the training in this model is available not only to therapists, but to anyone who's interested and uh, in learning this. And so the IFS Institute you know, coordinates all the training and there are different types of training available, different, you know, some of it's online and kind of overviews. So people who are interested in the model can, can learn much more. There's a, an extensive library of all the published articles that uh, around the model that have been over the years. And so a lot of resources on the website. And how do you see your clients or other people that have use this, you know, kind of at the consumer end, mm -hmm. um, how has it benefited them? What, what are the kind of outcomes that you see? Yeah, well, um, gosh, there are a number of, of ways to answer that question. And I think stepping back to how we use the model might help with the answer to the outcome. Okay. You know, so so I've said we have these different parts of ourselves and, you know, we call them family members and in this inner family and we have a leader of the family. So, so what? <laughs> but, um, and so what we do is develop relationships with those parts of ourselves. And I know that sounds very maybe abstract. Dr. Schwartz likes to call it family therapy in the dark. So just as we would turn our attention to a room full of people and speak to one at a time and get to know them, we have the same practice with whatever we notice going on inside ourselves. And um, to put it as simply as possible, the first thing we typically notice are what we call protective parts of us. Parts of us who are trying to manage people's perceptions, um, or trying to distract us from pain or numb out pain, just all these different strategies that we undertake to, to protect us from being overwhelmed by, by the pain that we carry from the wounds that, that we inevitably um, experience in life. And so, and so it's a process of connecting with between the, this leader of the family and these different parts of the family, making these connections, establishing relationships. Um, and there's a whole process involved in actually healing the wounds. Um, but in, in the course of that, what happens is that um, one of the things people experience is the, the resolution of symptoms. So someone who um, experiences a great deal of anxiety, for instance, you know, we would, uh, you know, just see that anxiety as something carried by a member of, of their inner family. So we get to know them and, mm -hmm. and help them with that. And so that they can, um, and that, that through that process, they can release that anxiety. Um, and, you know, there are a variety of things that, that people experience that, um, and a, and a process by which they can release the things that are burdensome 
and and the and the ultimately instead of a lot of protective strategies and activity to protect from pain what happens is the system is transformed so that these parts of us can just do what they were always meant to do and bring you know wonderful qualities that that make us who we are interesting yeah so like you said earlier you don't have the blockage anymore you don't have things right. preventing you from being your best that's right. And, and, you know, again, you know, in, in, from the perspective of the integration of Christian spirituality, you know, I think of it as releasing the constraints to our, our, the, the thing that is at the essence of our nature, which is being loving, you know. So if that vision is the great commandment to love God, one another and ourselves, this model really helps with the loving ourselves piece of it. Mm -hmm. And the more we can do that, the more we can do that with each other and with God. Hmm. Interesting. So let me play back to you, my own, like in internal families, I guess. So several times, you know, I've come up against an issue and I've said, you know, my head is telling me this and my heart is telling me that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as those examples of two conflicting family members, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I often, when I'm describing this, um, because it's a new way of understanding ourselves. So I realize that sometimes it feels a little vague or abstract and, you know, but, but all of us feel those dilemmas around a decision, right? Whatever that decision is, it can be something as simple as what am I going to have for lunch today? And something as profound as, am I staying in this relationship or not? Or am I going to switch jobs? You know, and there's, you always will notice um, some kind of tug of war, some polarity. And, and yes, when we understand that as the activity of different parts of ourselves, and we can bring um, the leader of the system, it's like having a team meeting. <laughs> and yeah, you, you listen, you listen to, well, what do you have to say? And respect it, even if like a lot of people will identify with the term inner critic, there's a lot out there about that. And so a lot of us will notice, you know, having a part of ourselves that's pretty harsh, you know, whether that's about our appearance or you name it, our inner critics will find something to be upset with us for. And, and one of the popular approaches is to, you know, try to ignore that or, you know, or somehow banish it. But this model says, no, turn toward it. Why is it doing that? Can we bring some curiosity? Can we say, well, you know, so like, let's say your head is in this particular example, more of the critical stuff. And you, you know, well, tell me more. And what do you hope to achieve by criticizing me? And it's, it's fascinating, Brian, because one of the things I notice almost 100% of the time is as soon as we turn toward a part of us, it starts to calm down. Hmm. it's very paradoxical, but there's, because there's a lot out there that says, you know, stuff it, move hmm. away from it. And we're saying, no, turn toward it, get curious. And the curiosity is one of those qualities the leader of the system possesses. And so when we can notice we're curious, curious, we notice, okay, the leaders, the leaders present. Um, and we, we just kind of chat with these different parts of ourselves. Wow. And so at the end of the day, I mean, how much of these blockages are driven by fear? Well, the, the protective parts of our system are driven by fear. Yeah. And what they fear is our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the adversity we experience in life leaves wounds, you know, and things like, you know, those, those worst things we believe about ourselves, you know, like people are going to find out, you know, I'm really not lovable. The imposter or, syndrome. You know, yeah. Or I'm a fraud. That's a, that's a popular one. You know, so these beliefs that we hold, there are painful emotions. Sometimes there are scenes that we, we can recall of times when this adversity occurred. Now, all of that material that's in there and it is a threat to the, to the functioning of the family, if you will. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so these other parts their job is to keep all that stuff buried. And we talk, we call the parts of the system that hold that stuff exiles. 
<laughs> the protectors say, like, if we can keep them in the basement of the family house, <laughs> then, then it, it's not a threat. And so there's a lot, a lot of the activity of these different strategies that we undertake. We do the best we can do. They, you know, we just try to adapt to survive. But the strategies, often there's a point in life where maybe something we had to do to survive as a kid, they're not working so well for us anymore, mm-hmm. you know. And, and what we do is, is we connect with those hardworking protective parts and say, you know, if we could heal this stuff, you wouldn't have to keep doing this job. Mm-hmm. You know? and, mm-hmm. and a lot of times they're, you know, with, with trust, they're on board and they allow for that. Hmm. Wow. So I mentioned the book that you had written, Restoring Relationships. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, the impetus for my book um, was actually seeing that although, you know, most people in the church at large, in the Christian community, um, are well-intentioned, you know, often people who are struggling will turn to um their church community, their spiritual community for support. And unfortunately, though, in spite of being well-intentioned, there are a lot of practices, there are a lot of responses that aren't so helpful and, in fact, can be harmful. And so that, as I was seeing that, that was just sort of the beginnings of the inspiration for the book because I knew, you know, that I believe, you know, this model teaches us a better way. And so in my book, I I take a look at those problematic approaches. And in the worst case, things like judgment and legalism, but even things like advice giving and sort of what often happens is an overemphasis on, you know, just believe the right thing and everything's going to be okay. Um, Then I look at those kind of through the lens of this model so people can really begin to see, well, that's all, that's our fearful parts, you know. We, we do these things because we're afraid of vulnerability. If I'm walking with somebody else whose vulnerability starts tapping into mine, that, that's scary territory, you know? And so, so beginning to understand that, and in the book, I also just provide a brief overview of some of, you know, how we're formed, our development as humans, and, and how vulnerable we are and and what happens in the course of life's experiences that you know that you know again these experiences we have stay in our system and um you know of course i provide an overview of this model and the integration with christian spirituality and then i apply it to common causes of distress which include loss betrayal and under the umbrella of betrayal is Addic- uh, adultery, abuse, racism. There are a lot of different forms of betrayal. Um, I apply it to addiction and also to the emotional response to physical and mental illness. Mm-hmm. So, you know, these common causes of distress are what provoke us to seek help. And first, if we want to come alongside somebody who's struggling with one of those things, we first need to know what happens in me when I'm confronted with these things, you know? Um, And so, and so that's a piece of what, what the book walks people through. And then ultimately, um, you know, I offer what I call a new spiritual practice. So if people resonate with this way of understanding themselves, there is a spiritual practice that we can do to connect with our own inner family members. Hmm. Well, it's really quite fascinating. It seems like been very helpful for many people which is a wonderful thing yeah yeah so beyond reading you know your book which i think is uh, a great thing i would recommend to a lot of folks what other ways can people get involved in utilizing ifs yeah well um the first step is really you know i, I think for even for therapists it's really learning the model, beginning to apply it to ourselves. And so whether that's learning through a resource like my book, um, there are a couple of other books in this, in this um, vein, if you will, that, that bring this model to the Christian community. Um, a colleague of mine, Mary Steege, wrote a book titled The Spirit-Led Life 
So there are some other resources out there. Most of these books are available through the bookstore that's on the IFS Institute website. Um, and then if somebody's really interested, there are some different steps of training. Uh, so there's, there are ways to do, um, you know, whether it's a one-off workshop, sort of an introductory workshop, whether it's the kind of the next step is there's a six month online course that kind of walks people through this. And then for people who really want to use it in the course of their work, whether they're coaches or therapists or some kind of practitioner, then there's a whole program of, of training. Um, so there are different degrees of, you know, for different levels of interest. And those are all by the IFS Institute or more broadly? Yeah. Yes, all of those. Yes. Now, and then there are trainers within the IFS Institute who, um, who do standalone trainings outside, un, outside of the umbrella of the IFS Institute um, as well. And so, for instance, you can look at YouTube and, and you will find different, different things that people have posted about this model. Hmm. Hmm. So Molly, can you give us an example? of how to apply this to heal, you know, some specific type of divide. Yeah, yes. Well, I think the best, the best approach is for each of us individually to think about an issue that, that we maybe feel strongly about. And we know there are people that feel very differently, whether that's politics, racial issues, whatever it might be, all the different topics that are being covered in this book. And, and to notice what is going on in me as I consider engaging with someone who's on the other side of this divide. Um, that the premise of my chapter is that in order to engage in, um, you know, with openness and curiosity and a true desire for connection, which in my opinion is the only way we heal divides, um, we have to start with what is blocking my natural, see, I see con connection and curiosity as innate desires of our heart as people who are made in God's image. And if I am not feeling those things, something's blocking it. And so my work is to do what we call in the IFS community, a Y-O-U turn, <laughs> a U-turn, because the, the tendency in, uh, in these areas of divide is to focus on the other person and why they should change or to, to, to be ready with our argument of why we're right. And, and so our work is to turn inside and say, what's going on in me? So as a white person, what... What goes on inside me when I hear a person of color speak about their experience in this world? Is there anything blocking my openness, my curiosity, my compassion? Well, probably, <laughs> you know, let's, if we're honest with ourselves, probably there's something there. Maybe there's defensiveness. Maybe there's a desire to protest. You know, I'm not, I'm not like those other people. <laughs> Any of those things reflect the work of protective parts of us. And so if I can befriend parts of me that, that, that want to jump in with, say, defensiveness, um, then as they, I can find out, well, what's, what's, where'd that come from? you know, <laughs> and, and, and do my work of healing anything in me that provokes this kind of protective response so that I can show up with a truly authentically open heart and curiosity. Wow. That I can see that would be powerful if, if you can master it, if a person can master it, but yeah. Yeah. And I do gonna be this tendency, right. To do the block. That's right. That's right. And, and it does take in the early going when we're anything we're learning that's new, right? Whether it's the piano or a new way of understanding ourselves, we probably need some kind of guide, you know? And so that's where, you know, reading the books, um, 
there's a there are a ton of books in the IFS Institute bookstore, you know, so um, some very introductory just I mean, Richard Schwartz wrote one that's just called the introduction to the internal family systems model that's very brief, very clear. Um, so, so just beginning to think about oneself this way. Um, and, you know, as a first step, and then then if the, if the intention is really to do more work and and develop a relationship with the parts of us, maybe the, there will be a need for a guide to, mm-hmm. to help in that process. Interesting. Well, very cool. Well, um, Molly, I really appreciate you, you know, contributing this learning and expertise to this project. Um, you know, many of the other chapters in the book are about organizations that mm-hmm. do specific types of divide healing, racial reconciliation, or political divides, or religious divides, or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, what, what you're talking about here, and what you bring to this book is, is, is unique in that it's, you know, a medically scientifically based psychotherapy approach to how we can all live better lives and, and, re, and, and, and interact better. So uh, yeah. that's really an important thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I, I hope it sparks some um, curiosity and certainly welcome people to connect with me through my website, um, which is just mollylacroix.com and uh, welcome comments and questions and interest. Wonderful. Well, thanks again, Molly. I uh, appreciate you being part of this program. My pleasure.